that in this morning they will receive from the Lord Jesus Christ that which the Lord has destined for them, that there will be confirmation in the hearts of people this morning on this Palm Sunday where we celebrate Hosanna, the one who came to save, where salvation was his purpose for coming to the earth. Jesus is the only man who was ever born into the earth for the purpose of death. He's the only one that came in as a child. He's the only one that came in as the son from heaven to be redeeming mankind from its sins in all its forms and manifestations. We are grateful this morning, Father. Each and every one where we are seated in the comfort of our homes and where we are this morning, our heart has a hallelujah. Our heart has a praise. Our heart has adoration for the King of Kings. Father, I pray for every household represented today that this word will find entrance into fertile soil, that the seed of the word of God will find entrance into the hearts of God's people. And they will not just say, well, I listened to a message this morning. They will be part of this, Father. They'll make themselves part of what is going to be shared now. And I give you all the praise and the glory and the honor and adoration for that today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said, Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you can tell, but I, I've got excitement upon excitement today. Thank you, Jesus, for the word of God. The word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing to the asunder of soul and spirit and of the bones and marrow. And it is a discerner of the very thoughts and the intents of the heart. Do you know that where you are seated this morning, that the Holy Spirit even knows the motivation of your heart of why you are watching this this morning. The Holy Spirit even knows your heart of why you logged in this morning. And then I want to be bold to say this morning, it is the Holy Spirit that got you to log in today. It is the Holy Spirit that said, you need to watch this. You need to listen today because this is going to be a message for you and your family. I want you to turn with me this morning to the 12th chapter of John. And you say to me, aren't you going to put pictures on the screen this morning? No, this is going to be one of those raw messages. You are not going to be spoiled this morning by having all of those lovely pictures and words and verses on the screen. Hallelujah. So this is one of those old fashioned, I want to call it a revival meeting this morning <laughs> online. Hallelujah. If, if we were together in a hall now. We would have been rejoicing in the presence of God still under the sounds of worship. But we have to get to the word as the Lord is leading us this morning. John chapter 12. And we are familiar with this portion of scripture. I want to ask you, especially those of you who have been walking with the Lord for a while. Won't you this morning listen to this portion of scripture as if you've never heard it before. Come on, listen for the word of God. Asof ons het nog nie voorheen gehoor het nie. Let us, let us treat it as if it's going to be a rhema word, a revelation word to our hearts today. And let it not just be a normal Palm Sunday morning. By the way, you can see the palm behind me at the back on the wall. Uh, if we were together today, I would, <laughs> I would have said to you before the time, I would have warned you and said, Bring jylle palm takke kerk toe. Bring the palm branches to church. And we would have rejoiced. With all of our palm branches, my wife, I tell you what, if you saw me yesterday cutting down this palm branch, you would have prayed for this man and you would have prayed earnestly. I had to balance on a wall. <laughs> I had to grab the pole that we used to clean the pool and I had to pull one of those branches down. Desiree had to hold it and she had to get me the, the cutters from the shed and I had to cut off this palm branch. The Lord helped me yesterday with good balance. I tell you what, at my age, I've got to be careful. You say, oh, you are, you're still a young man. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. You will get the front seats when we open a, a, a place again where we are going to have service. But we've got the Palm Branch because this is Palm Sunday. And by now, you must have found John chapter 12. We are going to read a very short portion there. 
And I want you to have your Bibles ready today. And I also want you to have a pen and a pencil ready because I'm a teacher of the Word. So I want to teach you some things about Palm Sunday today. John chapter 12, and we are reading from verse 12. The next day, a great multitude had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. In verse 13 of John 12, they took branches of palm trees and they went out to meet him and they cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, he sat on it as it is written. Fear not, O daughter of, of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised with him from the dead, bore witness. That's a very important verse for us this morning. The people who saw that Lazarus was raised from the dead, they were there. And I even want to go as far as to say, I believe that Lazarus himself was in the crowd this day. Imagine going to your first festival after you were raised from the dead. <laughs> With Jesus who raised you from the dead coming in on a donkey. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, you see, and now these are typically the Pharisees and their descendants are still alive today. You see that you are now accomplishing absolutely nothing. This is what they're saying to one another. They've got an infight. Because they're into religion, not relationship. So they're saying, you, look, you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. What an exaggeration. You know, after Lazarus was raised from the dead, the Pharisees were very upset because now a lot of people started following Jesus. Now, there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip. This is our key verse this morning. I'm going to share a couple of things with you, but this is really the key verse. So, Leicester Moy did this on steep of the woodstock from the Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and they asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. I'm not always very fond of titles for messages because there's always an expectation when you give a title. But this morning for our Palm Sunday, as we are leading up towards Passover, Pesha, I want us to, this morning as a team, as a people who join together on a Sunday, let us prepare ourselves in what is called Holy Week, which is the week that is ahead of us. And I believe with my whole heart that on Friday morning, when we deal the Passover, deal with the Passover service, when we do the Passover on Thursday, excuse me, Friday morning, we are going to have a time, I believe, like in no other Good Friday service that we've ever had. You say, Johan, how can you make such a proclamation? Because of the times we are living in. Because this is the most holy time for the people of God worldwide. And it is the most confrontational time it is the most confrontational time for the kingdom of darkness. That is why you will see even in this week that is ahead of us, how the forces of darkness will try whatever they can to bring chaos worldwide, even more chaos than what we are in right now. Because, because the kingdom of darkness right now is in total, absolute chaos and confusion because of what is happening worldwide, because they have thought that by this time the church will be silent and exactly the opposite has happened. There is a reason why what happened has happened. There was a reason for this particular season. Jesus was the reason for the season for you not to rely on a church organization. Hear what I'm saying? For you not to rely on everybody else. But Jesus brought you into a place where he could bring you back into intimacy with him personally. So that you can connect with his heart again as a child of God. So the, the, the relationship could be shaped and formed into intimacy. So that what is coming, you'll be, you'll be so close to him that you're going to hear his heartbeat against your heart. 
and you're going to know what to do in the hour that is coming. So my title this morning, we wish to see Jesus. We wish to see Jesus. Now, you will see that the person they came to, of all the disciples that these Greeks could have chosen to come to, to say, we would like to see Jesus. I don't know about you, but I think me personally, from the studies that I've done in the Gospels, I believe that I would have gone to John. I would have approached, approached John because John was the one who would be closest to Jesus. He was the one that would draw in close to Jesus. And by the way, I believe that God is raising up John-hearted people in the hour we are in in the world today to have, and I said it already, I'm going to say it again, to have your ear against the chest of Jesus, to hear his heartbeat, not just for you and your family, but for you to hear his heartbeat for the world today. I would have gone to John and said, John, I wish to see Jesus. But they went to Philip. You say, Johan, what is the, what is the, what is the, what mark? Why did they go to Philip? You will remember in John chapter 14, Philip drew close to Jesus and he said, Lord, listen, uh, you, you are talking so much about the Father. We would like you to show us the Father. That's a very noble question. It's a very noble request. That came from his heart. And Jesus could have said, just hold on a little bit, uh, Philip. And Jesus could have spoken to his father and said, just open the heavens the way you did at my baptism when the Holy Spirit came upon me. Just open the heavens. Let these guys just have a glimpse of you. He could have done it. But Jesus turned to him and said, Philip, how long have I been with you? And don't you know yet that once you have seen me, come on, you know the scripture. Once you have seen me, Philip, once you have lied, laid eyes upon me, Philip, you have laid eyes upon the Father. So guess which disciple the Greeks come to and they say, we wish to see Jesus. They come to Philip. The very one who questioned about the Father. Now, here is the thing. In the days we are living in now, worldwide, I hear the cries of people in their confusion in this very broken, dark, confused world. People are crying out, we wish to see Jesus. And here we have Jesus coming into Jerusalem on a donkey. And there are a lot of people present. Why are there a lot of people present? Because of what happened in the previous chapter, folks, we must not forget of how things worked sequentially in Jesus coming into Jerusalem. In the previous chapter, in John chapter 11, what happened in John 11? Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. It is so depicted in John's gospel. When Lazarus was raised from the dead, it says now that they were looking for Lazarus, now watch this. This is typical when it comes to religion and not relationship. The Pharisees were looking for Lazarus. Now, now watch this. To put him to death. Like the dude, excuse me for saying dude, but the dude was just raised from the dead. He's got new life flowing through him. Jesus raised him up and the Pharisees want to kill the testimony of the power and the influence of Jesus who is the Lord of heaven in the earth. The Pharisees want to silence Jesus and their descendants are still alive today because the Pharisees and the religious world want to shut up the Christians because we are proclaiming the King of Kings and the Lord of glory and the great I am. He who was and is and is to come, the Almighty. We are speaking and proclaiming Jesus. If the world wants to see Jesus, let us show them Jesus. But you are the living Bible where you are walking into checkers, where you are walking into pick and pay. You are a living presentation of the kingdom of heaven because the atmosphere of heaven is on the inside of you. And when you open your mouth to speak in the power that is in that name of Jesus, then people will see him. That's why the Bible says so very clearly to us, let your light so shine before men.
men, not for them to see you, my precious sister, not for them to see you, my precious brother, but the Bible says, so that they may recognize your father who is in heaven. So these people are all coming to Jerusalem. They are all gathering there because Jesus is coming in. And we know the story about the donkey. Jesus told two of his disciples, he says, listen, go into Jerusalem and go opposite, opposite to where you are now. And you will find a donkey that is tied. You need to loose him and bring him to me. If anyone along the way asks you, why are you loosening that donkey? Why are you loosing him? Then just say the Lord has need of him. You will find when Jesus gave the instruction to his two disciples, he says, um, the Lord has need of this donkey. The Lord has need of this donkey. Those of you who are keen students of the word, you will appreciate what I'm going to say next. In the whole gospel of Luke, right up to the point where we are now, and we know that Luke was the most accurate scribe concerning the events of, of Jesus' life. Luke was very careful. Luke was a doctor. Luke was very specific. Maybe his handwriting wasn't so clear as most of the doctor's handwritings are. But he penned down more details than the other disciples. And when Jesus said, tell them that the Lord has need of him. Do you know that up to this point, this is going to be very interesting for you all. Jesus had not referred to him as Lord. Everyone who called him Lord, everyone who wanted to put him in a, in, on a throne, everyone who wanted to make him king, everyone who brought him out where they wanted him to be seen, he hushed up all of them up to this point. Brother Alvin, Yonita, Carol, up to this point, Jesus had not referred to himself as Lord. Isn't that interesting? Then you say, well, why does he do it now? Because... His time had come for his own declaration of his identity and the purpose for which he was sent. Oh, wow. I'm going to show you some scriptures today. You are going to be blessed today in what I'm going to share with you. And I want to take the word palm. And as my students already know, I want to break it up into an acronym because I love words and I love acronyms. And I want to break the word palm up into these following words. The, the, the letter P is for people, it's for praise, it's for purpose, and it is for passion. Those of you who write down, you can write that down. But there were a lot of people that day. There was a lot of praise. Jesus was fulfilling his purpose because he was moving towards his passion. Now, you would agree with me with all of these people in Jerusalem shouting praises unto God, shouting Hosanna, Hosanna unto him. I, you're going to see this morning exactly what the wording is in the word of God. And in John chapter 12, what we just read, it said, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. When it says Hosanna, do you know that Hosanna means save us now? That's interesting. It means Save us now. Now, while you have your place there in John, we are quickly going to go also to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 is the equivalent of John chapter 12. This is where Luke gives his account of what happened on that particular day. Now, in Luke chapter, um, Luke chapter 19, guys, when you turn there, you are going to find that there are scriptures this morning that you are going to see. And you've read this many, many times. But this morning, there's going to be a bit of exposition on it. Listen to this. In verse 37 of John 19. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. Now, take us more what said this script now. Now we need to be careful. Look at what it says. They were rejoicing, they were worshiping, and they were going with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. There's the problem. There's the problem. You say to me, Johan, how can that be a problem? The Bible says they were rejoicing and worshiping Barry, 
because of all the things they had seen. How can this be a problem? They are giving ex explore they are giving expressions of worship unto God because of the works they had seen. But what is the title of our message? We wish to see Jesus. Ah, uh, you are getting this. You are getting this. They came because of the works he had done. The Greek said, we want to see Jesus. Watch where I'm going with this this morning. You are going to be blessed. I believe after this message, you are going to sit with your cup of coffee and with your wife and your husband and your friend, your children, your parents. You're going to discuss this and say, man, I wasn't aware of this. Then in, in, in verse 38, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Here's a problem. You said to me, you want, again, come on, how can it be a problem? They are quoting from the Old Testament. But listen to what they are saying. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Hold on. Why is this exclamation peace in heaven? Isn't there peace in heaven already? Isn't there glory in heaven already? Absolutely. Then why this exclamation of peace in heaven and glory in the highest? This is the time that the people should have shouted peace on earth. Isn't that what they said at his birth? Now it's his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And they are saying peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Still, they are not rec recognizing the Lord. They are only seeing the king. You say to me, what's the difference? It's a big difference. They expected Jesus to come in on a horse as a mighty warrior. Because horse, if you, if you look up all the connotations concerning horse in the Bible, you will find it means strength. It means valor. It means victory. But when you look at a donkey... <laughs> When you look at a donkey, you know what you know what you find according to the scriptures? It means peace. That's why Jesus never chose a horse. He chose a donkey. And when you go back in the word of God, and we're going to go quickly to Psalms 100 to keep your place there. Go to the middle of your Bible, to the very psalm that is the middle of your Bible, which is Psalms 118. Now listen to what it says here. From verse 26 of Psalms 118. It says, save now, I pray, O Lord. Here's the interesting thing. Where it says, save now, O Lord, that means Hosanna. So in the Old Testament already, Carol, in Psalms 118, we have Hosanna. In Psalms 118, verse 25, how long was this before Jesus came to the earth? Many years before Jesus came in, they already said, Hosanna, O Lord. Then I want you to see in those verses how many times it says, Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It doesn't say king. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. It doesn't say king. Give, uh, sorry, we have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord and he has given us light. Remember Jesus came in and said, I am the light of the world. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Already in Psalms 118, there's a prophecy that he will be Lord. That's why now you're going to see how the pieces put together. And I love doing it like this too. To bring these pieces together in all of our minds this morning as we are listening to this message on Palm Sunday. In Psalms 118, it is prophesying about the Lord that will come into Jerusalem. It even has the words, now save us, O Lord. But the people are seeing him as the king, which isn't wrong. But he's not on a horse. He's on a donkey. They should have seen him as the Lord. That's why he said, the, tell them that the Lord needs the donkey. He didn't say the king needs the donkey. Oh, wow. Guys, that means this morning, I want to ask you the question. 
Is he Lord of your life? Is he the Lord of your life? You say, well, Johan, he's king of kings and he's the great I am. Yes, he is that. The question is, just like the Greeks who said, we wish to see Jesus. If we wish to see Jesus, we are seeing him as Lord. That's why the letter P in Palms is because he came in for his purpose. He came in for his mission in coming into Jerusalem. Would you agree when there's a lot of praise and there are palm branches being waved back and forth? Would you agree that it's a festival occasion? We all agree that it's a festive occasion. It is a festival. It is festive. Here's the thing. The Bible says that they put their clothes. They took their clothes, their own clothes or their outer garments, and they put it on the, it was like the red carpet, so to speak. So again, red carpet. Think about red carpet. They put their clothes in front of him. Why? Because they sing him as the king. And what are they worshiping for? For all the deeds that he's done, all his works. John chapter 11, raising Lazarus from the dead. That's why they are worshiping. So I want to say something to you today. And please hear this man's heart. If you are worshiping God only because of what he's done in your life, you are missing it. If you are worshiping God in your life because of who he is, you are hitting the nail right on the head. You see, you can only worship God to the extent that you know him. Never forget that. You can only worship God to the extent that you know him. The more knowledge you have of his person, the greater your worship and praise is going to be. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. That's why it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Make a joyful noise unto him. It's all about him. In that second chapter of the book of Acts, when those people received the power of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit, Acts 1, 8, Acts 2, 4, you can go read in Acts chapter 1 and 2, where the Holy Spirit came down upon those people, they started speaking in tongues. When you go and read there, I counted them, there are 15 different dialects that they started worshiping God in. And then the people who spoke those dialects, the people who spoke those languages, said this, how is it that these people, and they knew that, <laughs> they knew they were Jews, and all of a sudden, they are speaking in all of these different languages. Now watch this. They said, we can all hear them speaking about the magnificence of God, giving glory unto God. So I want to say this to you. Those of you who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, it, ex it is to exclaim the wonders of God, the majesty of God, the awesomeness of His person, how great he is. It's not just for intercession, guys. That's secondary. First, your tongues, because your languages are so limited. Whether you can speak five languages, bless you. I'm, I'm happy for you. You can speak five languages. I'm going to say to you, if you take all of those five languages and you put them together, I'm talking about if you're speaking French and, and, and Spanish and, uh, and whatever other language, German, those languages are limited. That's why he gave us a prayer language <laughs> to glorify him. And I, I, I say to you, this is a, a festive occasion. And yet the Bible says to us, listen to this in Luke. You say, Johan, but what's going on here now? It says, and he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. The Pharisees wanted Jesus to rebuke the disciples. Because they were shouting, Hosanna, salvation has come. They were shouting that to him. Now, as he drew near, when he saw the city, he wept over it. You say, well, that's, that's quite an anticlimax. Yeah, everybody's happy. People are dancing, waving palm branches. People even took their clothes and they put it on the donkey and they put Jesus on top of the donkey. 
And by the way, this was a this was the first mission of this donkey. Just by <laughs> I wanted to actually preach about the donkey, and I thought, no, let me be obedient to the spirit of the Lord, because he said, You need to tell them about we wish to see Jesus. But this donkey, it's his maiden voyage. This was the first time that anyone sat on him. And he was a young donkey. And this donkey had his, come on, work with me, as his first mission to carry the Lord of Lords, the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, into the city of Jerusalem. What an honor for that little donkey. I'm sure he had a testimony after that. And he went and spoke to all the other donkeys and said, man, I want to tell you what happened. You heard about Jesus? Well, I had him on my back. I, I carried him into Jerusalem. <laughs> But when Jesus, when Jesus came near the city, if you look at the actual Greek text, I'm just letting someone in there. When you look at the actual Greek text, he burst into tears. Jesus, but this is your moment. Jesus, this is the time that you were born for. This is your your entry into Jerusalem. When you read this portion in the various translations, it says this, and I checked, I've got a couple of translations and I even went online. Most of the Bibles, when it talks about this story, it says the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Then why is he crying? Why is Jesus actually weeping? It tells us in verse 42 of Luke chapter 19, it says, Jerusalem, if you had known, even you, especially in this, your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. How sad is that? What is Jesus saying? He says that they didn't know their hour. They didn't know their moment. They didn't know. The time. They missed the time. Yet we know that the Bible tells us. And if you go back into. You are in Luke. In Luke chapter 1. Here Zechariah is getting a prophecy. Listen to this. Now his father Zechariah. Was filled with the Holy Spirit. And prophesied saying. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel. For he. Here it is. He has visited and redeemed his people. And has raised up a horn of salvation for them. What does that word horn mean? Means it, it means mighty and valiant helper. The author of salvation. And they missed it. They missed him. What were they looking for? They were looking for another meal. They were looking for another miracle. They were looking for another mother to be healed and a mother-in-law to be healed and a daughter to be raised. So what was the motive of these people that he came to? They recognized his works, but they didn't recognize him. All he did was good. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about. <coughs> excuse me. Doing good. And healing all those. Who were oppressed. By the devil. You see. He even asked them. What did you come out to see? Even when he spoke about John the Baptist. And Jesus could have asked that same question to the people. What did you come out to see? Another miracle, another wonder. I've heard Christians in the days we are in now, this past year of being in a catastrophe worldwide. And some people still in it. I've heard so many people say, well, we should really see the mighty hand of God now. We need to see the mighty hand of God. We need to see the miracle working power of God. We are still hearing it today. And I want to encourage you when you are sitting with precious Christian friends and family and relatives and acquaintances and colleagues. And they say, why aren't we seeing the mighty hand of God? 
then ask them this question. Would you see Jesus, friend? Would you see Jesus, uncle? Would you see Jesus, mom? Would you see Jesus, son? Why always just want the miracles and the works and the, the mighty acts and the deeds? So many people are asking, why are we not seeing that in the earth today? Because we've been looking for the works. We've been looking for what his hand can do. I want to say to you, stop looking for the hand of God and start looking at the face of God. Come close to his face. Look at him in the eyes. Put your heart against his chest and say, I wish to see you, Jesus. Because when he becomes your daily reality, those other things follow. Seek first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Righteousness means being in right standing with him. Do that in your fellowship with him. Do that in your intimacy with him. By being with him, you appreciate him and his person and all those other things fall into place. I have found, and hear my heart today, I have found the closer I get to his face, the less I have to pray about the problems in my life. The closer I come to him and closer to his heart, the less I have to pray about issues. It's like he takes care of that. Because when we draw close to him, we hear his heart this day. When he cried over a city that he came for. And that is why we are still encouraged today as the body of Christ. To pray for the peace of Jerusalem. There is such a lot of chaos in Israel right now. Where people are being forced to be vaccinated. People are forced and into, into thing, I, I'm, I'm, I'm standing and I'm saying, God, help your people. Intervene there, Lord. Let Jesus be known in Jerusalem. You see, when we look at the word of God and we hear his heart when he came in, the P is for people, it's for praise, it's for purpose, it's for passion. The A is for, he is the appointed ambassador. But they missed him. He was the appointed ambassador. That's the letter A in palm. The letter L is for he's the lamb and the Lord who was to come. And they needed to see him as the lamb and the Lord. But they only at this time recognized him as the king. They wanted to enthrone him. To have relief of the oppression of the Roman Empire. Yet Jesus came as Lamb and Lord to redeem them from their sins. You see, even if Jesus could at that time, and if he did become the king in that sense on a horse, they would have still remained in their sins. They would have been released from the Roman Empire, but still in their sins. Wouldn't it be better to be released from their sins and be free on the inside, even though the oppressors are still on the outside? And I want to give us a prophetic word for today. I want to say to you that because of the liberty that we are carrying on the inside of us, because we have the redemption of heaven on the inside of us, because we have been set free by the, the Lord of Lords, because we are walking in newness of life, because we are new creations in Christ. It doesn't matter what the oppressors do from the outside. Because we have the impressor on the inside. And he impresses me more than the oppressors from the outside. If that river on the inside of you is stronger and bigger and deeper than the floods of water that's coming from the outside in. You have nothing to worry about. I say to you, go deep with God in these days that we are in now. Go deep with him. The deeper you go with him, the more you are going to be able to stand. And having done all to stand, you stand your ground. As a son and a daughter of God. Hallelujah. We are not here. I said to someone the other day. It wasn't being facetious. I wasn't being, I wasn't being proud or arrogant. When I said. We are not here as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. To take sides with anybody. We are here to take over. We are the kingdom of God. 
We are the one who have the authority. We are the ones who stand in authority and in the power of the kingdom. And that's in the name of Jesus. That's what Jesus wanted them to see that day. And they missed it. And that's why the letter L, not only is he lamb and his Lord, but he said, and he made a statement there, and he said, this place, and he's speaking about Jerusalem, he said, not one stone shall remain upon another. You will be leveled, is what Jesus said. He says, this place is going to be leveled. Why was it going to be leveled? Because they missed the Lord. The last letter of the word palm is the letter M. And it stands for the Messiah's mission. The Messiah's mission. Jesus, the only man ever in the history of mankind that was born for the purpose of death. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, but unto us a son is given. The son was never born. The son always was. <laughs> he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He wasn't born in the beginning. He was the beginning. And because he is the beginning, he is the one who began the beginning. He is the one that's spoken into existence. John chapter 1, read the gospel of John. It says, and without him, there was nothing made that was made. Because he's creator this morning as well. He is original. The enemy is the counterfeit. And that's why Jesus, after all of this, at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, he says, all authority, <laughs> all authority and power has been given unto me. And now I send you forth. That is why we as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and the righteous, we need to become more sun conscious than sin conscious. Because he has cleansed you and he has, he has wiped your slate clean. A scripture that a sister shared with me the day before yesterday. She says, I read that scripture again. She says, I'm asking the Lord to give me words for a t-shirt that I want to print those words on. Where the word of God says, for the handwriting of ordinances. The handwriting of ordinances that were against us. Jesus took it and he nailed it to his cross. There was an entire list, and I'm going to talk about this next week. Whatever you do, don't miss Friday morning service. Don't miss Passover because we're going to be talking about this. So I'm just going to give you an hors d'oeuvre this morning. Because I'm not going to give you the whole message. But I want to say to you this morning, when Jesus was on that cross and that list of ordinances, which means everything that you ever did that was contrary to the kingdom of God. And how many of you know that your list was quite long? <laughs> A list of all your sins, iniquities, failures, and messes. Mine was very long. It says he took it and he nailed it to his cross. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sitting here under the anointing of the Lord, and I can sense his anointing right now. Jesus, we thank you for the ultimate price that you paid. I thank you, Jesus, that it's because you paid the ultimate price that we can walk in newness of life. It was prophesied that you would enter Jerusalem. Zechariah prophesied it. It was prophesied in the book of Psalms. Even the very words Hosanna was prophesied in the Old Testament. And this morning, I thank you right now. In your name, Jesus. 
that you've brought us out to a place of victory. You've brought us out to a place of strength. I thank you that on this Palm Sunday, as we in the spirit are waving our palm branches in rejoicing because of the king who's coming back again. You see, he is the enthroned king that's coming back. He is the enthroned Lord that's coming back. And he's going to fetch his people unto himself. So that where he is, we shall be with him forever. That is why we are not sad in this day. We are rejoicing because of who he is. We thank you, Jesus. That when you came into Jerusalem, you made your purpose very, very clear. I believe that your tears on that day were not understood. As you cried for a very broken world. As you cried for a world who constantly wanted to see your works and not see you. I want to say today that all of us who are listening to this message. We recognize you, Jesus. Just like those Greeks who came and say, we wish to see Jesus. Today we are saying we have seen him. Because he has made himself real to each and every one of us on the inside of us. Jesus, you are our present reality. You are the light who shines within us. You are the door of the sheepfold. You are the great shepherd who leads your sheep. And we only hear one voice. And it is the voice of our chief shepherd, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. I thank you, Jesus, for this holy week we are entering into now. Many things happened after you entered into Jerusalem. You cleansed the temple of religious practices and exercises where they made your house a place of merchandise instead of a house of prayer. And I want to say to you over this past year, I believe that the Lord has cleansed his temple again. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That I believe that the Lord has cleansed his temple because he felt unwelcome in a place of merchandise. This is a hard word for some of us. We cannot make the place of prayer also a place of merchandise, of selling and bartering. We cannot sell ourselves out at this hour and this time. This is the time we need to be more, be more committed and loyal and faithful to him than ever. Our hearts have been bought at a price, the highest price. And he paid for it with his blood. And he sealed you forever by the Holy Spirit. You are his and you belong to him. The Bible says he even lusts after you with envy when you follow after other gods. Father, this morning, we repent. As the body of Christ. We put aside. Everything that would draw us away from you. We put aside all the hindrances. We loosen ourselves this morning. So that people would see. Jesus. That they would not see us. Even when we look at ourselves in the mirror. That we would see Jesus. Your word says, Father, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 4, Father talks about the very fragrance of Christ that we need to disperse in every place. My precious brother and sister this morning, I want to say to you, as a son and a daughter of God, wherever you go, you carry the fragrance of Christ. May he be smelled when you walk into, walk into a room. May he be recognized and noticed when you get to a family gathering. May they see Jesus. So, Lord, I pray over every household right now. I pray for children that are not serving God right now. I pray for parents, Father, who are crying out for their children to come back to Jesus. I'm praying for parents, Father, that they will remain on their knees and carry on praying for their children to come back to Christ. If you are those parents this morning, there where you are seated in your home, raise your hands to God, please. Raise your hands to your Savior. 
And I'm going to pray a prayer on your behalf now. And I'm siding with you. I'm putting my shoulder next to yours right there where you are. Paul the Apostle said, I cannot be with you in, in body, but I'm with you in spirit. And I want to say I'm with you in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I come against every hindrance that has come against your children. I come against every fiery dart from the enemy that has been shut at their minds. And I speak as a man of God this morning with you as sons and daughters of God. We are the body of Christ. We carry the power and authority of the Christ on the inside of us. We have the name that is above every other name. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I come against every onslaught of the enemy, against the minds of your children, in Jesus' name. This morning, we command those hindrances and blockages to loosen itself from your children's minds in the name of Jesus. Right now, I pray for grandchildren to come back to Jesus. I pray for children that they would come back to Jesus. That they would serve the living God. That they would come and say, Mom and Dad, God has done something in my life. I have come back to the Lord. I've surrendered my life. You need to see the reality of that because you have prayed the prayer of faith now with me. You need to stand in faith. If you pray in faith, stand in faith. And then give thanks by faith. That your children are back with the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Then I want to pray for you my dear brother and sister today. Father as they have heard the word of the Lord. And Father this morning. Before I started I felt on the inside of me. This is going to be like a revival meeting. Where we as the body of Christ rejoice in the greatness of Christ. I pray for each one of you, brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name, that you would, in these days that are ahead now, the next five to six days until we get into the Passover, won't you in this week just turn around from some things in your life that you know you need not to be in? Won't you in this week that is ahead say, Lord, I completely surrender. I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Will you surrender to him again? Will you? And Father, as we surrender ourselves to you this, this week that is coming, and every day that we are going to go in until Passover, I thank you that your love and grace shines not just in us, but through us. May who you are, be seen in and through our hearts and our lives by all those that we meet so that even the unsaved will say, we see Jesus. We give you praise and thanks, Father. In your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise.